things you do is you got to clean them down. And that's uh, what the wash down is for. Now, there's always a normal amount of epibions on their back, the allergies and barnacles and, you know, little critters. I've seen little crabs hitchhiking and stuff like that. A uh, turtle, when you think about it, usually is a pretty slow, mellow animal, but don't let them fool you. A sea turtle can swim up to 25 miles per hour if you want to. Most of the time, though, they're pretty lazy, so they get some growth. But if they've been floating, they're pretty much immobile, floating at the surface for so long, they get a lot of growth to the point where you can't even see the carapace. You don't even know if there's injury or anything under there. So they're cleaned up, washed down. You can see my turtles are nice and sparkly. But they're wave measured, documented, and everyone is x-rayed. Now, three years ago, we went digital. And that's amazing. That saves you a lot of time and money, which is kind of sad. Because, you know, the kids probably are never going to have to develop anything in their life. It's always going to be digital. <laughs> um, it is kind of sad. I mean, you got to take a photography class, at least learn how to do it. Okay? <laughs> But I would say maybe 40 to 50% of the time you'll be totally shocked uh, when you'll find a little surprise in there. Like Cassandra, the one with the triple hook we were talking about earlier, she was an entanglement turtle. She just had line wrapped around the flipper, didn't see any sign of the hooks, didn't realize that she had swallowed them. Um, same thing with this hook. That was quite a surprise. That was actually this hook right here. Wow. Yeah. Like, man, that really looks like a big hook. It was. The triple hook had to be surgically removed because they were J-hooks, the circle hook passed. <laughs> circle hooks are designed to prevent gut hooking. So a circle hook does not catch or does not snag. So when you're out fishing, you know, you never know, you're probably going to catch something too short or something you didn't want to get to toss it back and sometimes you swallow a line and you got to cut it. At least with circle hooks, you feel confident knowing that that is going to pass. That's what happened here. What you're waiting for when you have a J-hook is just that bar to be great. Now usually that only takes a couple months or so and the rest will pass, but we had a turtle named Wilma. She had these hooks and that line in her for eight months. It was a double J-hook and about three feet of line. We give uh, laxative therapy. There's really not much you can do besides surgery. And since your options are limited with time and space, you try to leave surgery as a last resort. Right. So these... We're really not moving. And finally, eight months later, we decided, okay, we really need to, to get in here and get these out. It was one of the first times we'd done such an invasive surgery for these. Found out they were stainless steel, so that's why they weren't rusting. Uh -huh. Stainless steel is designed not to rust. So actually, the type of hook you use matters. And the cheaper the hook is, the quicker it rusts. Just saying. Okay, she survived. She went home three months later. But usually when you look at uh, impactions with a turtle or x-rays, you don't always get giant hook x-rays, right? Usually uh, with impactions, you don't see what's causing the blockage. You just see the trapped fecal matter. So that's all trapped poop inside that turtle there. Okay? You don't see what's in it, so my job, which is actually one of the most important jobs here, is to dig through the doo-doo, right? Find out what they ate. Sometimes it's exciting. So far, nothing really important or expensive, but still exciting. No diamond rings. We actually had a turtle named Munster who passed a bunch of shells. And we're now seeing more and more of this. Um, shells, gravel, sand, sponge that was all inside Munster, uh, seagrass. You see, the loggerheads in particular are being hit the hardest when it comes to food. The loggerheads, we talked about species earlier, and we'll go through it again and get up that. The loggerheads are the carnivores. Lobster, crab, and conch, which is what we want. And for these turtles, their food sources are going smaller and smaller because they're fishing. And they probably see a little hermit crab or a snail as a snack. But when you have a head this big and you're eating off the ground, what you get is a mouthful of rocks. A turtle, however, cannot regurgitate because they have keratin like spikes that point downward in the throat called papilla, prevents regurgitation. So there's really one way in and one way out. So we're seeing more and more of this. It's still not digestible, but technically natural in loggerheads. Took Munster four months to pass all that. He passed about four pounds of rock. Wow. Um, but he eventually went home feeling lighter. <laughs> about 200 pound turtle. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Lastly, with entanglements, you've got two types. One like that, where it's wrapped around that turtle's bone, and one where it's salvageable. If it's just kind of gone into the muscle, and there's just swelling, you can help save that flipper, and one of the best ways to promote blood flow is to keep it moving. Not to keep it immobile, but it hurts when they come in, they'll like 
favorite. You know, they kind of just stick it out and swollen and they don't really move it. So if it's a small enough turtle, our physical therapy is to go swimming with them. <laughs> Pick that turtle right up, put it in the pool, make it go. Just grab them back and forth and rock those flippers. But you don't do that with a 200 pound loggerhead because they'll eat you. Trust me, they really don't appreciate it. If they can, they'll hit you. But if it's like that, you got to amputate. It's that simple. If the flipper's dead, now it's not going to regenerate, it doesn't grow back. But missing flippers doesn't alter swimming patterns. It doesn't matter if it's a front or rear flipper. They don't swim in circles or do anything like you would assume. They do just fine. We see females that can pull their 200-pound bodies up the sand and nest that only have one front flipper. Now you're going to meet Joe. Joe's only got two and a half flippers, and he swims like a champ, honestly. They can be, they can still be released. Okay.